Hello, thanks for tuning in. Hey, in this video, I'm going to talk about food storage. I'm going to lay out some food items and show you what we have here in our household. But first, I want to talk a little bit about preparedness. Being prepared, I can tell you in our family, we're preppers, but we're not doomsday preppers. We don't believe the earth is going to be destroyed by an asteroid anytime soon. We don't believe the Russians and the Chinese are going to attack us. We don't believe in zombies are going to rise from the ground. We don't believe the earth is flat. And in fact, we don't believe that planet Nuru is going to strike our earth, killing half the planet. We don't believe in 99% of the things we see on the television or a lot of the things that we see on the internet. We don't believe that there's going to be an apocalyptic scenario anytime soon. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be prepared. Our grandparents used to be prepared. They used to can their own soups and stews. That's something that's been lost due to fast foods, uh, the, the rise of fast food restaurants and whatnot, the availability of food. A lot of people don't have lost that skill. Being pre a prepper doesn't mean you're paranoid. In fact, everybody's a, a prepper to some extent. You wake up, it's cold, it's snowing out. You prepare. You dress warm. You put on a jacket before you go outside. You might even warm up your car first before driving off. There's nothing wrong with being prepared. Now, a lot of people have reached out to me. They would like to start their own food storage, uh, their own uh, pantry. So in this video, what I've done is I laid out a bunch of key items that I think you might be interested in. Now, I'm not going to go over every little can of vegetable and every little can of soup and fruit. Cans are common sense. I am going to go over some other items that you might be interested in. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Overtax Taxpayer Channel. I've been meaning to do this video for quite some time now. And now that the coronavirus is in the news, I'm motivated. Now, I'm not preparing against the, the virus because I think it's a little bit blown out. I'm actually preparing against the people who are freaking out that they're going to die any moment. I don't want to go to the grocery store and be in the middle of a bunch of people who are fighting over the last roll of toilet paper, if you know what I mean. I buy all my stuff now. That way I don't have to do it when it's really needed. And I hope you take the same motivation. So here's just, like I said, a few items. I want to give you some ideas. I do a lot of canning, by the way. Wife and I, we do a lot of canning. We do soups, braised beef. This happens to be, uh, by the way, all my soups, I normally put them in uh, one quart size jars. That way there's enough, there's enough in here for two people. Two nice size bowls of soup for two people in the quart size jar. Green chili, pork, and bean. Everything's made fresh here, even the beans. They were uh, pinto beans that I, uh, I made myself. Braised beef. I normally make this in a one pint size jar because if you divide it in half, there's enough there for two people over a bed of rice and maybe a side of vegetables. So my soups go in a quart and my entrees go in a pint. Along with our, um, our canning items, we like to do a lot of freeze, uh, uh, dehydrate, I should say. These are blueberries. All these are blueberries right here. Blueberries. Now you think, well, that's not a lot of blueberries. No, actually this is a ton of blueberries. This jar uh, alone, this pint-sized jar alone, contains enough blueberries that were in a two by two flat. So I have approximately six flats of blueberries here. That's an awful lot of blueberries. So I definitely recommend uh, dehydrating fruits, berries, mushrooms. This again, I have about four jars of mushrooms. You would look at this and say, oh, that's not a lot. You know, it, it's uh, not worth my time. No, there's an awful lot of mushrooms in here. I would say, uh, if I recall, it was a large flat about a two by two flat that went into here. That's a lot of mushrooms. What else do we got here? By the way, these jars, as long as the lids don't give, they haven't bubbled up, you know they're good. They don't pop, they're good. 
and you could take these rings off to further test it. They're good. I actually keep the lid rings on loosely so it gives the, if the lid wants to pop, it gives it the uh, ability to do so. But at the same time, uh, if there's any shaking uh, on the rack or anything, I don't want the, I don't want the jar to fall off on, onto the, the shelf and cause an accident. Uh, spam. A lot of people don't like spam, but I'll tell you what, it's in a pinch. And when I say in a pinch, I'm talking in an emergency, when, when time is tight and, and whatnot. Spam ain't too bad. You just have to prepare it right. Um, I tried the low salt spam that they have at Costco. Didn't like it. Lacked flavor. Uh, Sam's Club has the regular spam. I like this. It'll last on your shelves. i say about three years. By the way, these soups, canned items, will last about three years. Freeze-dried stuff, pretty much indefinitely if it's in a sealed jar. But back to this, this will last about three years. You can make sandwiches with it. You can uh, fortify some scrambled eggs with it. So it really isn't bad. It, it really isn't bad. I do a lot of um, purchasing of, uh, I love soups. Green beans, I mean green pea soup, put pieces of ham in here, uh, and whatnot. I love split green pea soup. And lentils, tons of lentils, and, and more split peas, and more lentils. Bags of pastas, and, and more lentils in there. I love soups, and this is a quick and expensive way to feed a lot of people for multiple days at a time. You make a you make a pot of split pea soup with ham in a in a kettle, you got enough for two, three, four days depending on the amount of people. There's a lot of stuff I have for bugging out. Now I don't really recommend bugging out, but in a pinch in an emergency when you have to be mobile, little envelopes such as these go a long way. Lots of protein. You're not lugging around heavy Heavy cans or jars. There's just a couple of ideas. So right here we got salmon and chunk white tuna and the big packages of tuna. Excellent. I do recommend uh, going through these and eating them every so often. I don't believe these will be good beyond a year. So uh, definitely rotate these out. But keep some in stock. Excellent if you need to do some traveling. In your car or whatnot. I am a big fan of mashed potatoes. I love mashed potatoes. I especially love fresh mashed potatoes with real potatoes. Lots of butter and salt. But in an emergency, let's face it, you can't store a bunch of fresh potatoes. <laughs> These are not bad. I've tried many brands of powdered potatoes, instant potatoes we'll call them, and they all like bleh. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this brand here is as close, tastes as close to real potatoes as you can get. In this box, quite a few servings. A little water, a little butter, a little milk, boom, you have instant mashed potatoes. That tastes really good. I got these at Sam's Club. They do not sell these at Costco. But please try them, try them. I have about, I'd say about six of these. And they last forever. So I'm, I kid you not, I've had these uh, for six years. I have a box opened in the back. About twice a week we have mashed potatoes. That six year old box is fine. You cannot tell any, any type of degradation to the potatoes at all. Can ham, last a long time. This will stay on your shelf for about three, four years. The date, as long as your, your can isn't dented, isn't ballooned up, expanded or anything, you got a good can of ham. And that goes for any of your canned items, as well as your, your canned items that you canned yourself. This will be good on your shelf for three years. I recommend them. Tasty. It's a different... You know, it's, it, when, it breaks up the monotony when you have a decent ham. Salmon. What I like about this is the fact that in a pinch, 
You can eat it directly out of the can. It's already pre-cooked. Or if you have your own salmon recipe, like salmon croquettes or something like that, these are excellent. They're wild. They're not farm-raised. Good source of protein and very tasty. By the way, I wanted to talk about the expiration date. A lot of people call it an expiration date. That is a misnomer. That is a best used by date. That means the product will start to deteriorate right around that date. Slowly deteriorates. That doesn't mean the food is unedible. And it takes a long time to fully go bad. Take a sip of water here. My Berkey water. In a pinch, in an emergency, I would have no problem eating food that's deteriorated a little bit, if you know what I mean. Roast beef. Very tasty. Solid chunks of meat. Excellent product. Again, no bubbling in the cans. It's good. Have your own recipe or warm it up over a bed of rice, warm it up over a bed of noodles with some cream of mushroom soup. Pretty decent meal in a pinch, in an emergency. This is one of my favorite items. Chicken breast, again, in an emergency, in a pinch. You can eat it right out of the can. However, what I like to do Boil up some um, elbow noodles, uh, macaroni noodles. Put this in with the macaroni noodles. A little celery salt. Cubed up carrots, some celery. A little mayo. And you have yourself a chicken salad. Pasta. Love this stuff. And there's so many other ideas that you can use with this stuff. The last on the shelf, three years easily. Need I say anything about that? Love it. You gotta have some sauces for your stored pastas. Same with tuna. Can't go wrong with tuna. Two, three years on the shelf. Just rotate them, eat them, buy more. Always put them in the back, just like any other food item here. Excellent item, great protein. I love oatmeals and cream of wheats. I love them so much, I go through the biscottis and then I buy these and fill up these containers. So in here, there's about four of these. That's how much I love cream of wheat and it lasts forever. Quarter a cup will make enough, what, I think about three bowls. Excuse me. Quarter a cup of this, something like that. We'll make about three with three decent sized bowls. Love this stuff, as well as oatmeal. Got this and oatmeal. Lots of this. Applesauce. So we had an apple tree in our backyard. I was able to get six cans of cinnamon applesauce. That's why this is dark. I love cinnamon in my applesauce. And raisins for that matter. Again, no popping on the lid. Everything's good. Honey. Get some local raw honey. This stuff will last forever on the shelf. Need I say more? It'll solidify after a while, but that's okay. You put them in some warm water, leave them sit there for a few minutes, and will be back to new. Get yourself some honey. Last on the shelves forever. For you ladies out there, you know there's a million and one uses for this stuff. Spices. Yes, prep spices. All your emergency food items, they're gonna be on the little on the bland side. You go on a doc you're gonna to wanna to doctor them up. Definitely want to definitely, def, did that make sense? Definitely want to definitely, <laughs> you definitely want to doctor your food up. Spices, gravies, you name it. Just get a lot of it. I love this stuff right here. 
all these canned items. Storage life of approximately 25 years for these, these cans. 25 years. Okay, so servings per container is 10. Okay, now I prep for two people in the hopes that we have enough food for nine months to a year. 10 servings for two people, that equates to approximately two days worth of food in this one can. Actually, no, that's three days. Each person what has three meals a day, right? Three times three is nine. Three days. For these cans of food. Yes, you're going to be a little bit hungry after their serving size, but you have enough caloric intake to sustain life is what I'm saying. And you can doctor it up with your freeze-dried vegetables and whatnot. I have a lot of these. I have uh, fettuccine, pasta primavera, beef stroganoff, lasagna, eggs. Excellent food ideas, folks. Need I say more? Nothing like a nice hot, hot cup of uh, hot cocoa. Tom's. This might be new. Those cans of food might be new to somebody's stomach. Might upset their belly a little bit until they get used to it. I definitely recommend getting yourself some ant uh, some tums or whatnot. Rices store forever as long as you uh, put them in containers properly. Will store forever, including your pastas, beans, lentils. Will store forever, ever. And what I mean by storing properly, I'm going to move the camera now. Eighteen pounds. I have about three of these. Eighteen pounds of oats. That's oatmeal. Put this up here a little bit for a moment. I'm going to tilt the camera here. All my food is in airtight mylar bags. Bugs are not getting in here. To make the food last 25 years. In case anybody gets confused on how to cook it, there's the directions, the caloric intake, and everything I need. My rices. Here is 30 pounds of rice. I have various rices. This happens to be a basami, or how do you pronounce that, and white rice mixture. 30 pounds right there. Again. Everything's got the directions, the caloric intake, everything somebody would need to know in a Mylar bag. Put the camera back down. Sorry for the shaky camera. I haven't gone professional yet. Anyway, these are just a few items. I'm going to go and in the, in the blink of an eye through the magic of... Uh, a photo editing, I'm going to show you some other food items that are in the house. Sugars. Stored the same way. In the Mylar bags, airtight. I have about three or four buckets of these. Homemade laundry detergent. I have about two or three buckets of these. 
One bucket will last my wife and I over a year. Wheat, hard wheat berries. This happens to be red wheat for bread and whatnot. This bucket alone is 45 pounds. This will make us bread for easily a year. I have about three or four canisters of these. Other containers I have, elbow macaronis, pastas, more rices, dog food. Dog food is also stored in a Mylar bag to keep it fresh. Buckets underneath there are flowers stored in Mylar bags, airtight, oxygen absorbers, along with some sugars. More buckets, pastas, beans, uh, pinto beans, rices, lentils, black beans. All items needed for baking, that's yeast, and everything that you can possibly fathom to, for baking. Pre-made envelopes of food like Uncle Ben's, rices, and, and that sort of thing. This is just one pantry that we have. Just one pantry. Anyway, folks, get out, get yourself some food, not necessarily meaning that you should panic due to this coronavirus, but more so to avoid the people who are panicking. Take care.